Burma coup resistance notes November 11, 2022. Among the five villages burned down in Myong Township in the past four days were the homes of three junta army officers with the rank of major. The destruction has become so generalized that it affects the home communities of some of the perpetrators. One of the major's families used a photo to prove their junta affiliation and received an apology for the destruction of their home. The other two families joined the caravans of 10,000 refugees fleeing the violence in Myong Township of Zagaring region. Ethnic regions. After the Arakan army captured two junta food supply trucks in Ponakian yesterday, junta troops responded by shooting dead 10 civilian villages and leaving the bodies where they fell, then burning homes. This was after airstrikes were called in. Then today junta troops killed two more villages with random mortar fire. The victims were tending their cows when they were killed. A surge of junta troops into Beit Tavoy district of Korthile, Tananthari region on Burmese maps continues to cause conflict. This morning a three-vehicle convoy going from Dawei to Mayake was bombed in Taiachang Township, disabling one of the trucks and killing five troops. Later today troops were dropped by helicopter into Maimankone and Sithimi villages of Yuyu Township, where they chased away residents and began burning the communities. The extent of damage and casualties isn't yet known, but no PDF activity is reported there. Yesterday junta troops clashed with a local PDF in Palor Township again three times, and seven junta troops were killed before the troops turned back. Also, a Pai Sohiti terrorist was shot and killed by a PDF in Longlone Township near Dawei. The junta launched helicopter and jet bombing yesterday in Duplay a district of Korthile, Mayawadi Township on Burmese maps trying to dislodge Karen Cobra Battalion forces so the junta could advance southward. It didn't work, the Cobras counter-attacked and caused an unknown number of junta casualties. In Chin State, junta troops invaded Palon DWI village of Mindat Township from nearby Hatilan Township in Magwe region on November 7. Chin forces then surrounded them in the village, and their snipers killed two troops. They were prevented from further attacking and capturing the junta troops, however, when the troops abducted local people as human shields. The troops then burned the town and left but killed seven of their hostages first. Junta Scorched Earth Village Terrorism Campaign One of the PDF's dangerous duties is evacuating civilians when junta terrorists invade villages. Junta troops shot and killed two PDF soldiers while the latter were helping people escape Thayshaken village in Butelan Township, Zagaring region on November 9. People's Defense Forces PDF's Another coordinated PDF coalition gathered two days ago November 9 to stop a junta Pai Sohiti village terrorism gang of 140 people that has been burning and driving away communities in Tants Township. The PDFs attacked for two hours until they ran out of ammunition, killing 12 of the terrorists. A PDF representative commented that the junta Pai Sohiti column appeared to include about 25 female Pai Sohitis. The junta has been giving villages in Zagaring region the choice of joining the terrorism or becoming its victims. Entire villages either become Pai Sohiti camps or they are burned to the ground. Also in Tants Township yesterday, a PDF drone bombed junta Pai Sohitis at a crossroads checkpoint, injuring three of them. Likewise in Bago region, a report emerged yesterday of a November 7 battle in which PDFs gathered to counterattack a junta village destruction gang in Maya village of Taungu Township. The PDFs killed seven of the 26 junta troops and wounded nine. The PDFs captured some weapons and were able to recover the items looted from the village and return them to their owners. In Myanmu town of Zagaring region, eight troops guarding the junta-owned Myanmar Economic Bank fell asleep last night. A PDF opened fire, killing five of them and seriously wounding another. Last week four junta troops were killed in the same location. A junta judge was killed by a package bomb at his courthouse today in Kaulan Township. The responsible party isn't mentioned. The National Unity Government is training a special commando unit to operate in cities. It is under the NUG's 703rd Battalion based in Magwe region and comprises 30 specially equipped and trained commandos. The report doesn't specify the source of the commando training expertise. Urban Warfare In Yangon, Five acres of rare farmland in Shwepiatha Township were stolen from the farmers and sold to a junta crony by regime administrators collaborating with the military. Junta thugs destroyed the farmers' houses and threatened anyone objecting to the sale. The only distinction of this case is that it happened in the city.
In fact it typifies what has been happening in ethnic minority regions for the past 70 plus years since independence, the theft of land by military regime cronies and the expulsion or even killing of hundreds of thousands of farmers who traditionally owned the land. In Monowa city during the holiday, junta troops guarding a gate got drunk and fell asleep. Two of them were killed when urban PDF members noticed them and tossed a grenade into their bunker. Political and economic, as the junta prepares for sham elections in 2023, it wants to regain control of lost areas in order to enhance the reach of the voting, so it is redeploying army divisions and preparing for a big offensive in Kareni, Karen, and Chin states and Zagaring and Magwe regions. This intelligence comes from a watermelon source inside the military. The offensive could begin in November or December. Junta forces already being overstretched and combat weary without any downtime, a major operation decided by the generals for political motives would come at great cost to the frontline troops and likely accompanied by intensified air strikes. The net result could be accelerated weakening of the junta's ground army and an upsurge of displaced civilian refugees. Desperate for cash, the junta is cannibalizing its own. The dictatorship has issued an order for military members to buy more shares of junta crony companies to generate cash. Soldiers, however, are reluctant to do this, since these companies have been earning few profits after the February 2021 coup. Low-level troops' salaries aren't even sufficient to pay monthly living costs, let alone buy shares of failing companies. In Kachin State, the junta has been stopping motorists and seizing cars and motorcycles. It has taken 20 cars and 60 motorcycles in Mykina and Barmo. Nearly a week later most have not been returned, and may be considered stolen by the junta. The only ones returned belong to people closely related to the junta. Junta cronies are known to resell vehicles stolen in this way.